So, if you can't fight every type of style and adapt to the situations that arise, um, you're limiting yourself on how good of a boxer you're going to be. So, my whole thing was, even like in football, you know what I mean? I don't want to be just uh, stereotyped as, as a tackle and safety or something. I've had, I'm a big play intercept, you know, an interception player that, that wants to be well rounded, and it's the same thing in the boxing. I want to be able to, you know, drop you with a body shot, but still be able to throw uppercuts and still be able to fight you from a distance, but, you know, fight you in every type of style possible. What's the reaction been from the Ravens? I guess mostly positive, at least that's the way it's been reported in the media, but what are the coaches, other players, what's the reaction been to your teammates in the organization? Um, the thing is, we can't talk to anybody right now, you know what I mean, no coaches, no management or anything, but I read a clip about Steve Bashotti wanting me, our owner wanted me to, wanting to, uh, to walk me into the ring, which honestly, it made my week and it was honestly cool, one of the coolest things that, that I've ever read um, and heard somebody say about me, so to have the support of the owner and to know how much he means to, to the Baltimore community and... Uh, I've been on non-stop interviews with just like the, uh, the local media in Baltimore. He's got uh, unbelievable support and feedback, and, and hopefully, you know, we'll see a bunch of people from Baltimore um, in the stands on Saturday, and, and hopefully, actually be able to get a fight in Baltimore. And then finally, what's the rush like stepping into the ring compared to the football field? Is it the same feeling? Is it different? It's uh, you got to you got to uh, keep control of it when you're walking in because. Um, you know, like in football, there's going to be a coin toss, and you got time to, you know, calm yourself back down. And you know, you might be starting off on on special teams, but have a whole break before you're actually on the field of defense. Where when it's ding ding, it's time to go, and you got, you know, what I mean, no one else to look at, and you don't have anyone calling plays. You got three minutes of, of the first time of the fight that, you know, you got to be ready to go. Thanks, I appreciate it. Tommy, I'm, I imagine most of your teammates are probably still in the Baltimore area, a couple hours away. If any of them. Indicate they're coming up for the fight? Um, a couple of them um, have texted me that they're not going to be able to make it just because a lot of, right around this time, um, a lot of guys go back home, back to wherever they're from or, or wherever they're at. So I don't exactly know, you know, how many people are, are going to be around, but I'm hoping just to get. Um, a crowd out of Baltimore, just of fans and stuff. You know, we had we had our moment and stuff as teammates um, in Vegas and, and sharing that moment together. So I'm hoping just to see a good crowd out, out of Baltimore in the Baltimore area. With the lockout being talked about, I guess now for the better part of a year now. I mean, were you plotting this? Uh, how long in advance were you? Plotting? I saw. I mean, I saw not necessarily a lockout and all this stuff, but I saw you know the, the chance of this happening. And um, I've always used boxing as a tool also is my training in, in football so it's not like I was ever um, away from the gym for more than maybe a year or two just because when you're done with your senior year you got combine you got all-star games you got draft you got you know what I mean it's it's too much to to uh, to be able to put all, all that all that um, all that together and by the time your rookie year is over it's two years straight of football I went into hiatus for about a month or two and just you know what I mean and just left it off and relaxed and then after my second year started getting back into the gym started moving things Things along slowly, and then you know, started hearing about what might happen after the season, and then um, you know, kind of just hearing the feeling that coach, we're not even going to be allowed to be on the facility. You know, I mean, coaches aren't even going to be able to talk to us, man. You know, I mean, we're not even allowed to have con uh, uh, you know conversations with them. I'm not a person that can just sit around and do nothing for more than you know a week or two. I'm, I'm, I'm a highly active person, and this is something I've been doing my whole life. This is, for me, this is like it was in high school, middle school, grade school. It was football season in the fall and boxing in the winter and spring. With your with your NFL contract, not that it's kind of, nothing's going to happen. I guess till April at the earliest. If so, for some miracle the lockout was ended today, would you be allowed to do this on Saturday night? Yeah, because I'm still. Um, a restricted free agent, so okay. I'm not technically. Okay. Okay. Uh, you didn't tender, right? No, so I'm not. I don't have a contract with with the Ravens at this time. If you had signed your tender, would you be allowed to do this? Probably not. It'd all be up to the organization at that point. But because of the lockout and all that stuff, um, I'd imagine I probably would be able to because there's just oh, decertified like all that does stuff. Does the standard NFL contract like prohibit this kind of stuff? Well, your first, um, like when you first sign, it's not the big money that they're putting into, you know what I mean, when you sign your second and third contract. So when you sign your second and third contract, typically they might put in... No motorcycle, no snowboarding, no, you know what I mean, anything 
anything that could be detrimental to your health, basically, you're not allowed to do. Which could even be playing pickup game of basketball, to be honest. You know, I mean, you're still, even though it all depends on, on what team you have, because you still are liable if you sprain an ankle playing a pickup game of basketball, you could be in severe, severe trouble. How, how did the whole Emmanuel Stewart thing uh, come into fruition? It was, um, got a chance. My boxing manager, Mike Joyce, has known him um, for quite some time. And uh, I met him actually when I was like 12 years old in the gym in Miami. I think he was with either Shannon Briggs or Lennox Lewis. I still, I'm not that good at remember that I was 12 years old. You know, I, mean, I, remember, I remember meeting him and being in the gym and stuff. But um, seeing him two weeks ago before uh, the Cotto fight, just seeing him work and stuff and got a chance to hit mitts with them and just you know speak just speak speak boxing to them um, and see them actually work you know they're in the they're in there just you know going through their routine and stuff and you're just seeing you know to an outsider it looks like just some jabs and some you know light workout and then you see them actually fight and you see what his jab and his uppercut does to somebody and you see why you know what I mean they stuck to that game plan and, and did what they did. What do you what kind of enhancements do you expect from the from this uh, relationship with uh, Stewart? I think um, it raises a level of confidence too when you know how many great fighters he's worked with. Um, so for him to give you a compliment or him to say you know you're doing this right you're doing you know what I mean it, it just gives you uh, an extra bit of confidence and know that you have one of the best boxing minds of all time that's in your corner that's giving you feedback or giving you uh, an opinion or giving you a game plan on, on what we're going to be going about. You're in those very early stages still but what can you tell us about uh, Saturday night's opponent? Um, I know I saw him yesterday he's a strong you know just a strong build um, Obviously, you never know what a guy's punch is going to be like until you feel it, no matter how much you know film and all that stuff that you watch. So, um, I know it's going to be a tough fight. You know, I know without a doubt it's going to be a tough fight, and I'm going to have to, you know, keep my composure, stick to the game plan, and and, and fight my fight. It sounds like after your last fight, after your last fight, you're almost kind of like disappointed in it. Yeah, I was. I was disappointed without a doubt, um, because my plan was to really, you know, feel him out a little bit land some body shots to slow him down and then by the time that was over, you know I mean, you're never really going to look good when you're feeling somebody out and drop some body shots. You're obviously, you know what I mean, you're, it's going to look like a rough fight and, yeah. you know what I mean, never really got a chance to get get into my into my rhythm and stuff. Um, but those are fights sometimes you need, you know what I mean, it, it, it woke me up again that this is fighting, you know what I mean, you're not mm -hmm. playing football anymore, nobody's going to be patting you on the ass after a play or something, these guys are coming to take your head off, so you better be ready. Can you comment a little bit on the um, back and forth Twitter war you had with uh, Ocho Cinco? Yeah, it started. I know, um, you know, he's been in the gym and, and been boxing and stuff, um, but he's never fought. I fought, you know what I mean? This is something that I take very seriously, and this is something that this is my profession, and I have very, very strong feelings about, you know what I mean? This is, this is my art form. This is my way of showing you, you know, who I am and stuff, so... Um, not necessarily that he was disrespecting it, but if you're going to say that and you're going to take it seriously, then it's time to step in the ring and, and see what it's really like. Do what think, did he say? I, I'm not familiar with what he said. Um, he was just saying he's got faster hands than me, faster feet than me, and he knocked me out. I guess he's just stick the soccer is what he's saying. I was going to ask, you think maybe it's his attempt to be a three-sport athlete? <laughs> I mean, he, he could he could give it a shot. I don't know if he's going to have a professional fight. Maybe we do something for charity. But, um, you know, the guys in the NFL, we made it there because you're highly competitive people. You know what I mean? We, we love, love football, but we love competition no matter what it is. You know what I mean? That's just just a part of, of how we're made up. I read somewhere that, uh, you know, you were 193 for your last fight that maybe you want to kind of get down closer to light heavyweight. Is that true? Um, I was seeing... I was messing around. I'm back up to around 199, 200 because if I'm going to be fighting cruiserweight, I got to have this. But knowing that I could still have that strength and be, um, you know, close to that, what do you got to get down to? Like a nine pound cut, so I'd have to get down to about 186, 187 for. 184, 184 for a nine for a nine pound cut. So I'm still nine pounds away um, without a diet. So you know, I mean, just you gotta leave all options open because. Yeah, uh, well, I mean, you do have a day job when that does come back. <laughs> I mean, how low could you go without it being 
detrimental to That's your workout I, plan and all I that play, stuff? I play, I play around 195 as it is. Um, playing at 180 is not, you know what I mean, it's not going to cut it. It's just, unless you're a corner, unless I move the corner or something. But to be a safety, <laughs> um, I'm even small around the 195, 200 pound bar. Um, so... There is a fine line of, of not dropping it, but when the football season, when the football career is over, light heavyweight's not a bad idea. Just oh, so because, boxing, you know, I mean, it's my, boxing yeah, is your yeah. career after football. I think I know. I think I know the answer to this question. Toughest media: boxing media, NFL media, or Notre Dame media. I think I know the answer to this one. Notre Dame media is yeah. tough. I mean, the, the people that cover Notre Dame every day are awesome, but the people that don't cover them every day are going to crush you. know what I mean? Just, just, crush, just crush you. Even though you're thinking more about the Eagles and after football, the, the pairing up with Stewart kind of signals a seriousness to us. Uh, could there be any chance if that you might cut your football career short if, if um, you were continuing to be successful in boxing? If I'm progressing the way I think I know I can and stuff and, and um, move along, I'm going to be playing football next season. I don't want to say 100, percent but you know what I mean because there's never a certainty to anything. You know what I mean? There might be a lockout or something like that. But I know I got another year of football left in me, uh, without a doubt that I want to play with the Ravens just because we've been so close to a Super Bowl that it's hard to be, you know, what I mean, an AFC Championship game and then be in the second round of the playoffs two years in a row and just walk away from a chance to be able to win a Super Bowl. Um, that's something that, you know, I'm probably probably have to live the rest of my life with a little bit of regret. And no matter how much I love boxing, it's tough, you know what I mean, to pass up the highest level of, of something that you've also done. Um, but don't get me wrong, boxing's always on my mind. You know what I mean? I, I take this very, very seriously. And, uh, you know, I'm glad that, that people are, are understanding that, you know, especially people knowing boxing, that, that this hiring isn't, you know, I'm not joking around with, with, with what I'm doing. This is something I do that I take very, very seriously and, and at some point want to be at the highest level you could possibly be. When you made that decision very early on to choose football over boxing because you had participated in both, was it simply just a matter of opportunity in, fo in football? Yeah, because you only got one shot. If you're not drafted or you don't come out of college, you're not, you know what I mean? Other than playing arena or something in Canada, you're not going to play in the NFL. Um, and like I've been saying, you know what I mean? If it's, it, as long as it's the highest level of competition, you know, and it's something that I love doing, you got to stick to it and, uh, you know, stick to the plan of, of doing that. It's uh, Obviously, it, it's, it's eaten at me a little bit that I've had to put my boxing career on hold for that long, but... You know, the NFL isn't. You know, I mean, isn't too bad for you know for some to put it on hold for. A lot of boxing talk around the locker room. You guys Always. You know, I mean, you'll be surprised on how much football players yeah. love boxing. You know, what I mean, there's only one or two of them that you know, what I mean, kind of like the cage stuff because we have uh, John Jones's brother Arthur mm -hmm. Jones is on our team. Um, so there's a, yeah, there's always talk about you know MMA to boxing, but most a lot of most football players are boxing purists. Do you subscribe to the theory that the the current heavyweight champion is probably on the gridiron? Um, possibly, but either one of the Klitschko's are no slouches, no matter how boring their style might seem to be. They're at the top of the game. They're strong, strong dudes. And what is the most important punch in boxing? A jab. So if you're the best jab, you know what I mean? You can't take that away from somebody because they do something that well. Um, but I'd say your best American, you know what I mean? Your best American shot is definitely on the gridiron somewhere.